features, right? Specifically for the scats and the cats. For RTs and SXTs, uh, you know, you're on your own. And they literally say in black and white, this may result in the vehicle being stolen. Or if you connect or Dodge offers any kind of over the air software updates for your car, it locks the damn car from receiving those software updates. What could it say? Let's find out. All right, guys, so what do we have cooking today? I got a letter from FCA, man. Uh, vehicle, motor vehicle notification, FCA, you already know what time it is. Most of you already know what this letter is gonna entail, but I do wanna go over it. I have a bad habit of not checking my mail like every day, so this has probably been sitting in my car or in my mailbox for at least a week here, but um, I've got some errands to run, so we're gonna run those errands and then we're gonna get into what this letter means and how it can affect you and basically how stupid it is for FCA to even offer this type of option, this type of option for our type of our cars. But whatever, let's go ahead and get into it. All right guys, so as you can tell, we're somewhere safe and sound here at Mallet Creek Park. You can't go wrong up here, open space. Nobody's gonna bother us. We can sit here and do what we do, how we do it. So long story short, this is what the letter looks like. I'm sure a lot of you guys have already received it and kind of wondered what it is. 6.2 liter and 6.4 liter enhanced security features right specifically for the scats and the cats for rts and sxts uh, you know you're on your own but uh let me go ahead and read it from top to bottom and we'll go into it and get you guys set up this looks familiar doesn't it kind of like all my other videos um uh fca us is now offering security improvements on certain 2020 dodge charger vehicles equipped with a 6.2 liter or 6.4 liter engine hellcats and scat packs srts only and i do mean srts uh, the radio frequency hub, also known as RF-hub module on your vehicle, contains a software security vulnerability that allows experienced thieves to program their own key fob using aftermarket diagnostic tools. This may result in the vehicle being stolen. They literally say in black and white, this may result in the vehicle being stolen. Which is interesting because we've seen videos and videos and videos probably in the last two years, especially on my channel, of people programming their device intercepting the signal between your key fob and your car replicating that signal and ultimately literally just unlocking your car starting it up the normal way i don't have to break the windows i don't have to break the locks i don't have to break the door handles none of that replicate it open it up quiet is kept take your car and it's gone right you're not catching a 6.2 liter or 6.4 liter charger on foot so once they start it up it's gone um how many times have we seen this essentially what criminals or thieves will do is if they know that you got a charger, they'll pull up to you if you got your shit parked outside. Uh, they'll pull up to you, and nine times out of ten, what most people do is they'll have their key fob somewhere close to the front door to the garage. So what the thieves will do is they have a device, it's like a sniffing device, and the device sniffs for the key fob's signal, right? And long story short they're able to intercept the signal from your key fob to your car replicated and now your car can't tell the difference your car cannot tell whether it's the key fob or whether it's the thieves device replicating the signal unlock the door your car is gone uh we've seen that shit happen all the time the rf module right uh, radio frequency module may now be updated with software that will prevent hackers from programming their own key fob for the vehicle in addition in addition, pay attention to this. This is why this is update is so fucked up. In addition, a software update will also prevent the dealer from programming new key fobs for the vehicle in the future. And the RF module will be permanently locked, preventing it from receiving future software updates. So once you take this car to the dealership and you have them um, update the RF hub module so that thieves can't break into your car, from that moment on, you can no longer have additional key fobs created 
So if for whatever reason you lose a key fob, you lose your key fob or you break it or whatever, you can no longer have these created, right? It's no longer just gonna be $120, right? Because your module is locked. And furthermore, if Uconnect or Dodge offers any kind of over the air software updates for your car, it locks the damn car from receiving those software updates. So you can no longer get new key fobs and you can no longer receive software updates. So if for whatever reason Dodge in a year or two decides that they're gonna update the entire Uconnect software system in the car, if you've had this done, you cannot do that. It locks your entire software system down. Stupid, right? The trade-off is it makes your car a little safer because they're, I guess they're patching that uh, vulnerability in their software. But on the other hand, you cannot have an additional key fob made and you can no longer receive over the air software updates for your car. <sighs> Only Dodge, man. Only Dodge. Let me continue here and then we'll talk about it. You will be provided the option to purchase and program additional key fobs for your vehicle at your expense. At your expense, you can purchase additional key fobs. Dodge is not going to cover that. Uh, prior to locking the RF module, so you have to purchase the additional key fobs before they lock it. If you don't and they lock it, you're fucked. So when you go to the dealership, they're going to say, do you want to buy more key fobs just in case? Most of our cars, most you know, brand new Chargers and Challengers always come with two key fobs. I've got this one that I've had forever and then I've got one in the house on chill that I've never touched. But if you know that you're a forgetful or a, you know a type of person that loses a lot of shit, they give you the option to purchase an additional key fob at your own expense prior to locking the car so that once they lock it, you have three key fobs or four key fobs. Um, if new key fobs are to be programmed after receiving the software update, the RF module will need to be replaced. So after the fact, once they program the RF module, lock it down so that thieves can't get in, if you lose a key fob and it's like, I need new key fobs, they've got to replace the whole goddamn RF module, which I have no idea where that is in a car. I assume it's behind uh, the, the driver interface, the, the, you know, the motherboard of the car. Uh, they got to replace the whole RF module. That good, They got to crack into the car, take the RF module out, give you a brand new one that's unlocked. Then you can get new keys, new key fobs. But nine times out of 10, that RF module is going to have the same vulnerabilities that the first one had that you had in the car originally. So you're going to have to lock that one and hopefully you bought enough key fobs, whatever. FCA will update your vehicle RF module free of charge. So they'll do the update free of charge that's free of software and labor, which I don't understand what labor means because nine times out of 10, it's somebody sitting in your car doing a lot of this, pushing a lot of buttons. And then 30 minutes later, your car is ready, but they're going to do that for free because Dodge is such a great company. Uh, to do this, your dealer will reprogram the RF module with the latest available software. The estimated repair time is 30 minutes. In addition, your dealer will require your vehicle for proper check-in, preparation, and check-out during your visit, which may require more time. Uh, your time is important to us, so we recommend that you schedule a service appointment to minimize your inconvenience. Please, please bring this letter with you to the dealership. So take this letter with you. So long story short, you've got the call up the Dodge, make an appointment, say, I want to get my uh, RF module updated. Uh, at which point they'll say, well, okay, we'll come on in on Thursday at one o'clock or whatever the case may be, right? This sun is killing me. Come on in at, at Thursday at one o'clock. You set up the appointment. Uh, they're going to take your car 30, 45 minutes, maybe even an hour later, because if you know anything about Dodge, they're always backed up. Every time I've ever gone to get an oil change or a tire rotation, I've always been there at minimum like an hour and 15, hour and a half, which, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I'm not knocking Dodge by any means. I love this company. I love the car. I love the manufacturer. It's been nothing but good to me. But, you know, when you read stuff like this, it's interesting. So from top to bottom, to my understanding... This only applies to the, the, the scat packs and the Hellcats, 392s and Hellcats. And by 392s, I mean Daytona 392s, TA 392s, um, what else? Uh, obviously, scat pack 392s, um, and then 2020. So it's got to be a 2020 or a 2021 at this point. To my understanding, they're going to start doing like a trickle-down effect where they start doing the 2019s and 18s and 17s, but that'll come much later. Right now, they're doing 21s and 2020s. Um, and it only applies to the 6.2 liter and 6.4 liter Hemis. Um, so apparently, uh, in the nutshell, there is a vulnerability in the software of our cars that allows thieves to take advantage of that vulnerability. 
And Dodge has realized this after um, almost seven years of having these cars out on the streets. Dodge has realized this. And because they've realized this, they've come to the conclusion that we need to patch this, this uh, software vulnerability. Uh, so at this point, they're offering the opportunity to come in, get your car updated. They'll patch it. Thieves should no longer be able to replicate that signal coming from your car. So your car should be pretty much safe. Aside from good old fashioned breaking your window and, you know, just lifting your shit off the ground and doing some weird shit or whatever the case may be, they shouldn't be able to essentially hack the system and have the car working against itself or have the car working against you, the owner. Um, the downside to this, obviously it's free, free of labor, free of, uh, free of software. Everything's free. Shouldn't have to pay anything. Free 99, right? Um, the only downside to this is once they patch that vulnerability in your software, ergo locking the RF module, right? RF hub, radio frequency hub in your car. Once they lock that down, you can no longer receive over the air software updates for your Uconnect system in your car. That's done. I don't know what those software updates do. They come so few and far in between that I really don't notice anything, but every now and then they will update your car probably once or twice a year. I think I've had this car for a year and I've had one update to my knowledge. So the updates may not be that big of a deal. Um, but then again, if you're updating the software, it's probably because something was either broken in the past or it can be made better with this new update. You won't be getting that anymore because it's essentially locking and blocking those software updates from happening. So you can cross that out. And once they lock the RF module, module you will no longer be able to just go up to Dodge and say, I need a replacement key fob. Um, that obviously has something to do with uh, them patching that vulnerability in such a way that thieves can't Sorry. replicate. Shut the shut up. These can't replicate the signal. And because they can't replicate it, Dodge can't replicate the signal either. That's basically what they're saying is because thieves can't replicate the signal. We can't replicate it either. So nine times out of 10, the same vulnerability hack that thieves are using to break into Dodge Chargers and Challengers is the same vulnerability hack that Dodge themselves are using to recreate and replace key fobs, if you think about it. Because if they're locking it now, and obviously the thieves can't get in, that's basically a roundabout way of saying that Dodge can't get in either if they can't replace the key fob themselves. And long story short, after you lock it down, if you need a new key fob for whatever reason, maybe you just lose your key fob, lose both of your key fobs or something happens weird, whatever, you know, act of God, something wild. What happens is you have to make an appointment at Dodge. They have to rip into your car, tear it apart and replace the RF module completely. And that is not free of charge. You will be paying for that. That's not under the warranty. First thing they're going to say is we sent you a letter saying that if this happens, so you will be paying for that. And I can almost guarantee that will be 300, 500 plus dollars right there. And you're going to need new key fobs on top of that. Um, I'll put it to you like this. If you are not forgetful and you don't care about software updates and you're not worried about losing your key fob, go ahead and get the update. It's free of charge. You just sacrifice 30, 45 minutes, an hour of your time. Get the update. It prevents thieves from just breaking into your car with the quickness, right? Get the update. If you are fearful of possibly losing your key fob in the future and needing it to be replaced, or you still want to receive software updates to your car, you should not get the update. That's the, the trade-off is you won't get the updates. You won't be able to replace the key fob. Um, I look at it like this, man. It's Dodge trying, you know, they're seeing that these cars are being stolen at an astronomical rate and, um, Dodge owners have, I guess, um, you know, outcried to Dodge that something needs to be done. If not retroactively or retrospectively or retroactively, I'm sorry, something needs to be done in the future on future vehicles. Now the 2021s, I believe they come with this standard. I could be mistaken. You might actually have to take your 2021 back to the dealership and get the same thing done. But I, I can't think off the top of my head. But um, for 2020s and everything under, you will have to make that appointment. It's a step in the right direction. Uh, obviously, it's not the best step in the right direction. It's not the best that Dodge could do. But I guess that, you know, all things considered, this is pretty much what conclusion they arrived at. And in which case, it pretty much is what it is, right? 
Um, that's pretty much it, guys. I, me person, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. Um, I'm not a forgetful person. I would never ever lose my key fob. I've never lost my key fob with any of my chargers or any of my cars, period. I'm just not that type of guy. Um, but I would say that I do want my car to receive those software updates. That's important as well. And I don't want to lock my shit down to the point that I can't receive updates because if something, if Dodge just pulls a rabbit out of its hat in the next year or so, or however long I have the scat, and they're like, yeah, if you do this update, it completely changes the, the visual, everything, the, the functionality, all that good stuff. If my shit's locked down, I'm pretty much fucked, you know? But at the end of the day, I guess it's just up to you guys. I mean, you know the neighborhood that you live in. You know the environments that you frequent. You know whether or not you need to lock your shit down or not. You know what I'm saying? I, I can't tell you that, you know? Um, I can't tell you that, and I'm not going to. As far as what I do... Hit me in the DMs and I'll tell you. I don't really want to broadcast that um, uh, via YouTube for uh, safety reasons. But, I, you know, I really just don't like the fact that Dodge had, in order for them to give you something, they have to take two things away from you, right? In order for them to give you security, they got to take two other things away from you. I, I really don't like that, but it's the FCA way. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we don't pay for these cars because of their security. We don't pay for them because of their luxury. We pay for them because of their power and the big ass engine and the name that comes behind owning a Hellcat or a Scat Pack or Hemia in general. So you know what you're getting into. It's it's a shame. I don't personally like it, but it is what it is. Um, talk to your boy in the comments. Like, subscribe, comment. Talk to me in the DMs. Talk to me on YouTube. How do you feel about this? Uh, what are you guys going to do? That's really what I want to know. I kind of will go off for you guys. If I'm not explaining this correctly. Maybe my interpretation is off. By all means, correct me. And I'll make a follow-up video so that I'm not spreading misinformation. Um, but I'm kind of, uh, um, you know, I, I, I'm kind of uh, discombobbled right now as far as the option that I want to choose. I really don't know what I want to do. Because I feel like to do something is to block something in the future. To not do something is to potentially risk your car being stolen at any given moment, right? But uh, talk to your boy, like, subscribe, comment, and spin your boy Knockout360. I'm still, like, I'm looking off in the distance because I really don't know what, what route I want to take. I really don't. But uh, talk to your boy, like, subscribe, comment. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.